competition. Okay lang naman po. And next is, you may type your questions in the chat box later after our webinar po or after Ma'am Shai speaks. And then lastly, let us all wear a decent attire po for our picture at the end. So meron po tayong picture mamaya after the webinar. <laughs> so to introduce our guest speaker, from the city to Vicunta Forest Farm in, in the Sierra Madre Mountains of Tanay Rizal, Shai has been a lifelong advocate for healthy and clean living. Enriched by a degree in holistic nutrition, she encourages everyone, young and young at heart, to be mindful of one's physical, mental, and especially spiritual health. Just a short visit to her organic farm or an episode of her YouTube Eating Wise channel lets you in a lets you in on a on this advocacies. When she's not busy planting, harvesting, or prepping food and medicine, or trekking, or making artworks, or eating wise videos, she writes in various literary genres on the same. Her homestead, Vicunta Forest Farm, an echo destination, imbibes her passion for simple living high thinking. But her foremost advocacy to help and inspire people to care for their spiritual health is highlighted by heartwarming meditation sessions and her sharing of yoga wisdom. So let us all welcome po Ma'am Shai, our guest speaker for tonight. Hello po Ma'am, how are you all? Hi, 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 Namaste, everybody. Welcome, and thank you very much for coming and lending me a few precious minutes of your day. I hope everybody is well and healthy and happy. I'm not mute, or am I? No. Okay. <laughs> your audio is good, ma'am. Okay, good. So before I begin, I would uh, like to offer my respects to my spiritual teacher and to the Lord. All right, so health is wealth. So who doesn't want to be health wealthy, right? Most people, they wanna be money wealthy. The others, they wanna be um, Awards wealthy, like recognition, awards, medals, Pulitzer Prize, Nobel Prize, whatever. Others want to be land wealthy and others knowledge wealthy. But money is always tops, the top aim of people, right? But you know, Steve Jobs, as you know, the inventor of Apple, he was mega wealthy with money, fame, knowledge, right? And when he was about to leave his body, this is what he said, and I quote, At this moment, lying in bed, sick, and remembering my whole life, I realize that all the recognition and wealth I have is meaningless in the face of imminent death. I have the money to hire the best at any task, but it is not possible to hire someone to carry my disease. Money can get you all kinds of material things, but there is one thing you can't buy, life. So, while we are living in this world, it is far more precious to strive for the kind of wealth that transcends above material gains, which is the wealth of wisdom, true wisdom, not different from knowledge okay knowledge we can easily achieve if we are masipag right but what we need to aim for is true wisdom that will help us achieve the goal of life right so it will bring meaning to your life and so taking advantage of this nutrition conscious month i want to highlight the importance of um nutrition in its very essence and how we can use it wisely in our journey to the goal of life okay first off 
Nutrition is something we all need to survive. It's what happens in our bodies when we eat. It's what keeps these bodies alive and ideally free from disease. In the Holy Scripture, would you believe, huh? this is a fact, there is so much instruction given to us on how to live in this world, which if we simply follow, then all of us will live long, productive, healthy lives with little or no disease. That is a fact. Unfortunately, this disease-free existence is just now a dream, right? Because people have not been following the laws of nature and increasingly so every year, right? We have been and continue to abuse the earth so that the nourishment that should be there in the foods that grow off the earth are severely lacking in nutrients. So the land, it doesn't produce anymore as much fruits, grains, vegetables in the same quantity and quality as it did in past ages. The cow does not give as much milk as it used to give. As such, all living beings, humans and animals, we don't have enough sumptuous, nourishing food. You see, we are all strands in the web of life. Everything is connected. So how we treat the environment, Mother Nature, determines the state of health of the whole planet and inextricably the health of all the living beings dependent on her, on Mother Earth. So we are paying the consequences of our choices, right? According to Ayurveda, the causes of disease are two. Uh, toxin, uh, karmic reaction, which is more, uh, more popularly known, uh, more commonly known as karma, and toxins. Toxins um, can come from food, people, air, environment, stress, etc. By the way, Ayurveda, for those of you who are uh, who don't know, is the science of life, and it is the it, it's it's been thousands and thousands of years already, and it is perfect in um, in everything we need to know about health and all the other health modalities like like traditional Chinese medicine, homeopathy. Uh, naturopathy, all these different health modalities come from Ayurveda. So it's the mother of science of health. And in um, the traditional theory of health is called the land and seed theory of health. In a nutshell, it just means like the land, uh, the land and seed, right? The land is the body and the seed are all the external factors that interact with and influence uh, with the land. The seed uh, represents all the external factors, right? So if you apply this to health, the land is uh, the body and the seeds are all these other factors. And so if we cultivate the land so that it becomes infertile, uh, environment to the hostile factors, the seeds, in this case like toxins, bacteria, virus, microbes, cancer-causing factors, etc. Chances are these will not make home in the body. All right, so that is the land. So the Ayurvedic approach to health is uh, that we should live a holistically healthy life. When we say holistically, the root word is whole, meaning it's buo, you know, it's not one dimensional, but it is whole. And so um, it, it's conducive to stamina, strength, um, building the immune system and general well-being. Such a lifestyle covers health in all aspects, body, mind and soul. When the body is in harmonious balance, then there will be little, if any, space left for disease organisms to get comfortable in your body. 
So, in other words, the seed cannot grow in the land. Okay, that's the land and seed theory. Now, since there's not enough time to discuss nutrition in all its aspects, I'm just going to try to squeeze everything in Nutrition 101, which is a good jump of point in attaining better overall health. All right, and um, before I begin with the Nutrition 101, is that whenever we speak of health, remember always that it is of utmost importance to treat it holistically. Health in body, mind, and spirit. Now, because the health of the body and the mind, they cannot stand alone from each other. They are always, always interrelated. Like if you if you have a healthy body but not a healthy mind, something's it's, it's not it doesn't really work very well, right? And and, and the other way around. And although the spirit soul or the spirit it stands separate from the mind and the body uh, because it is not material right but if we have a healthy body and mind then it makes us uh, it makes it easier for us to be able to use our body and mind for a higher purpose and that is achieving the ultimate health which is self realization so here we go nutrition 101 the healthy hacks you know uh, that will change your life okay go let's have the PowerPoint number one is no no PowerPoint oh dear uh-huh all right do you have the PowerPoint Voila. Oh, there. Okay, is it clear? Yes, there? We can see it. Yes. Go. Okay, go. So, number one, next slide, please. As much as possible, try to eat foods closest to nature's design. Now, what does that mean? So, here we have, I always like to use the analogy of the potato, or not analogy, the illustration of a potato, okay? So you have a potato, right? Here's your potato, and here's Pringles, all right? Now, um, how many processes do you think it's taken for the potato to be Pringles? How many? Actually, by the time it is Pringles, there is very, very, very little potato left. Do you know how they make the, the Pringles? They make it from a slurry. You know, it's a slurry. It's like a slush. It's like a slush of all tiny little bit of potato and all these different chemicals and additives. They make it and then they put it in a machine so that it's perfect. So in other words, to make a long story short, it is very far from how nature designed it. Therefore, the nutrients are already practically void. The health and the benefits are none. All right? So as much as possible, you do this and to do this you must delete processed foods from your pantry you know like all these things and here replace it with health giving foods instead of sickness giving food right and um I, and, and here i must must emphasize to everybody please learn to read ingredients okay because a lot of people i mean if i go to the supermarket and i see these people they just get and get and get and get stuff from the shelves right and they put it in their carts they don't read the ingredients so i advise you like for example you try you get a a a, a can of powdered milk all right and you read the ingredients and you will see that there is very little milk there's a lot of other stuff in it so you see what I mean okay now nothing beats next is nothing beats homemade all right oh yeah by the way I have to add oh what happened to the slide go back to the next slide yeah just stay there stay there 
Okay, um, I stay away from bad news foods. What are bad news foods? Those that jeopardize health. Processed foods is one of them. Fast foods is another. And because fast foods, you know, they are abused foods. Really, there's no health to be taken from them. And then leftover foods. By Ayurvedic standards, food cooked the day before are not fit for consumption. The older the foods, the closer they get to rotting. And most of the nutrients are withering to nothing. And they are more difficult to digest. Now, these junk foods, here's the thing. Huh? These junk foods, which are also known as snack foods, they go through a lot of trials and research. You know why? They put a lot of additives and all kinds of stuff to perfectly trigger this what is called hedonic hyperphagia. Do you know what that is? Oh, it sounds so complicated. No, but hedonic is from the word hedonism, which means pleasure. And hyperphagia is uh, some form of overeating where you eat and eat even when you're not hungry. So they d tr trigger this hedonic hyperphagia and addiction. That is a fact that they put all the ingredients there that will make sure that you will become addicted and you will overeat. All right. And here are some of the big no-no's that I must put on the, sh on the billboards on to, to please take out of your pantry. Anything, aside from chips and everything like that, you know, I mean, candy and all that stuff. MSG. MSG has gotten monosodium glutamate. MSG has become such a bad guy, right? So that now they, they, they hide it. They call it natural flavoring. They call it hydrolyzed protein. They call it, um, they call it enhanced flavoring. And they have a number for it, E something something. Another one to keep out is aspartame, high fructose corn syrup, hydrogenated fat, which is what most baked foods are made of. Okay, nothing beats homemade, right? Now, prepare, um, nothing beats homemade, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, you know, everybody will say, no, I don't have time to make my own food, and I, you know, like that, right? But if you have an exam, for example, you're a student, you have an exam, right? Your goal is to pass the exam. So you're not going to say, I don't have time to, you know, to study. But you will make time to study so that you can pass the exam, right? So similarly, if you want to get healthy, you have to make time. Use your time wisely, all right? And in case, you know, at one time or another, we do have to order pre-prepared foods. And if you do that, choose reliable and healthy brands and preferably organic. And I must add here, very, very important, the act of collecting a food, like it's very nice if you can harvest, like what we do in the farm. Washing, preparing, cooking, this is all part of the nutritional and healing process. It's not separate from, it's not just eating, eating, eating. It's a whole, like I said, holistic, all right? Okay, prepare food and cook foods well and nicely. There's one thing in Ayurveda, when you eat food, you should feel good after. I mean, really good. You feel nourished, you feel satisfied. That is a nourishing food. If you feel like, oh, bloated and like, what do you call that, impacho, it, it's not, it's not good. Good. Okay. One of the things you should learn is prepare the vegetables, like chop them uh, after you wash them and do not soak. Because when you do this, you leach all the nutrients into the water and then you throw out the water into the sink and the sink doesn't need all those nu nutrients. You do. Your body does. All right. So if you do ever you do that, use the water that you soaked in. 
and um, in the Ayurvedic way and also in traditional Chinese medicine uh, they they would rather cook the vegetables to get the most out of it okay uh, raw vegetables are good but not for everybody and not too often because there are side effects of this uh, and they could be like like flatulence you know like gas like that and stomach aches and other digestive problems another thing train your palate to appreciate the natural flavors of foods make friends with herbs you know the herbs have been there since our ancestors and everything and and they're there for a reason some herbs are there to not only to enhance flavor but to enhance the nutrients to enhance the nutrient uptake to enhance the nutrient delivery so it's really amazing it's like magical it's so nice you know what i mean all right number two next slide please moderation moderation no number two moderation is the perennial password to the kingdom of health okay that's easy enough right overeating taxes your organs and then um overeating adds unwanted weight we all know that eat until you're only three-fourths full just imagine the blender all right you have a blender if you fill the f fill up the blender up to the max it won't be able to blend right it's too full so you have to put a little space so you're able to blend are you able to see me also yeah or just the yes, slide ah, okay yes. so so and then imagine your stomach is this big huh imagine so you go like this to your food <laughs> And you can see just how much you know what I mean usually we eat more than that so our stomach stretches so when our stomach stretches when we eat only enough we our body th thinks that oh we're still hungry but you're not so you'll get used to it all right and here another thing just because a food is healthy and organic or whatever it doesn't mean that sky's the limit to eating it all right so in the Srimad Bhagavatam which is an ancient scripture which all, in which all knowledge is found all knowledge in the world is found in the Srimad Bhagavatam or the Bhagavat Purana it says in Kali Yuga that's the age this that's our age now where we we are in the age of quarrel and confusion and chaos the duration of life is shortened not so much because of insufficient food but because of irregular habits you see overeating over sense gratification over dependence on another's mercy and artificial standards of living sap the very quality of human energy therefore du duration of life is shortened if all living beings obey the prescribed rules then there cannot be any disturbance between one living being and another how wonderful is that next slide please number three hello number three okay the best stress relief diet is moderate in taste and quantity light in nature mild cooling in energy mildly cooling pure and rich all right the purpose of food is to increase duration of life and to purify the mind and aid bodily strength this is the only purpose okay now there are three modes of material nature passion uh, goodness passion and ignorance that's sattva rajas tamas now there are also three doshas or constitutions which is vata pita kapa now foods in the mode of goodness are described 
as they increase the duration of life, they purify one's existence and give strength, health, happiness, and satisfaction. Imagine that. How wonderful, yeah? They are sweet, juicy, fattening, and palatable. Hey, but of course, fattening here does not mean like fat fattening, you know, like making you fat, but rather it means uh, it has good fats. And they are generally ban balancing for all doshas. So what, what you read there in uh, slide number three is the description of foods in the mode of goodness. Meaning balancing, you know, any dosha can eat it, all right? Foods in the mode of passion are those that are too bitter, too salty, sour, maanghang, dry, and hot. These, they cause pain, distress, and disease. And they cause misery by producing mucus in the stomach and leading to disease. Foods in the mode of ignorance are tasteless, stale, putrid, meaning uh, sort of like rotting stinky and unclean and they're cooked more than three hours before being eaten all right and i have something to say about that later next slide please here are some basic healthful eating tips offer a prayer of thanks before eating so here any food no any food that is prepared with uh, following the injunctions of scripture and offered to God can be taken even if it was prepared long long ago why because such food becomes spiritualized therefore if you want to make your food antiseptic eatable and palatable for everybody you should offer first the food to God and then we offer thanks because this attitude of gratitude, it turns everything we have into enough. And as a bonus, it is extremely healthy for your heart. And I mean cardiovascularly, okay? Physically, it, the attitude of gratitude will give you a healthier heart. How cool is that, yeah? Okay, eat while relaxed and seated why why should you eat, eat a uh, sit while you eat one it takes a load off your feet and mind and it is with due respect to the digestive system that needs focused energy to convert food into nourishment for the body and by the same token digestive energy must be focused and aided by keeping the mind distressed. So, therefore, if you are eating while you're working or in the computer or watching TV or arguing with someone or thinking about a problem, whatever it may be, you know, it, it's, it wakes up these hormones and different reactions that is caused by this stress or this thinking and it messes up with the digestive system. So if you eat peacefully, it brings on this positive neuropeptides that make a great difference in efficient digestion needed for balance. Okay, next, chew food well. Nako! Almost everybody, they, we don't chew food well, right? Well, you know, you have to remember, the body needs enzymes. To break down food okay enzymes where do you find enzymes in raw food and from the pancreas and from the mouth okay uh, because when food is cooked up to 110 degrees then um, the enzymes are dead so if you chew your food well you know while you're eating your food it's very cool you know because while you're eating your food they send text messages already to the pancreas. The pancreas are the ones that make uh, the enzymes, all right? And so there's messages that say, oh, there's fats here, there's, there's um, 
there's fats, there's proteins, there are carbohydrates here. So the pancreas starts making all these different enzymes to deal with the the uh, the fats, the, the carbohydrates, and the proteins, right? Because they're different enzymes. If you chew in your mouth very well, this produces salivary amylase, which is already an enzyme that starts to break down that food. So it gives the pancreas a little bit less work. When you overwork your pancreas, it's going to be very bad for you. Did you know that diabetes is, an, is a pancreas issue? Because, because we don't eat right, first of all, we don't eat right, and we don't chew our food well, and all these other bad, bad habits. So the pancreas is just overworked and underpaid, you know? Okay, next. The lower the sun goes, the less you eat. So... Uh, timing, food, quantity, those are all essential. Agni, that is called the fire of digestion. Agni means fire. The fire of the di digestion uh, follows the fire of the sun. So this fire is most powerful at noontime, which is the greatest fire strength from the sun. Okay? So, therefore, this is the ideal time to eat the heaviest meal of the day. Because if you follow this timing, the body will, will take full advantage of this efficient digestion, assimilation, and utilization of food nutrients. If you eat too much, you know, and heavy foods, uh, when the agni is low, when the fire is low, like in the beginning of the day or at the end of the day, then uh, what's going to happen is malabsorption of nutrients and foods will either be not digested or will be partially digested lung. And these are very bad for health. All right. Another point in timing is just you know in the farm we have this grass cutter right we go, you know the whole time we always have to remind them that it is a machine it needs to rest you can't just the whole time because you're going to ruin the machine so similarly our bodies it needs downtime so when you eat okay the digestion system is working 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 right so it keeps on working so it needs some downtime. If you keep eating again, mamaya, you're eating again, mamaya, you're eating again, what happens is patong-patong na yung mga job order, right? So what's going to happen is it's going to be a sloppy job or, you know, and then, and if it, and the digestion uh, system it does a sloppy job, some others are not yet digested, some others, you know, won't even get digested. So this accumulates and it starts to ferment. And this fermentation will start to mess up your system, all right? So ideally, you should eat three hours, not sunud-sunud, all right? If, you're, if you kind of get hungry, you know, just drink. Drink water or eat a little fruit or something. Those are good, or little nuts or something, all right? Okay, learn the basics of food combining. This is quite complicated, but just basically, here are just a few pointers about food combining. Um, you know, if you put an incompatible people together, there's going to be trouble, right? So similarly, if you put incompatible foods together and eat them in one meal, um, there's going to be trouble also inside your body. Examples are milk and sour foods like... Um, a fermented pickles or, or, or calamansi juice or something like that. Okay, they don't jive. Okay, another thing is drink milk alone and after they're boiled. Because when you do this, when you drink milk alone and you boil it first, then all the proteins are broken down very quickly and it becomes very easy to digest. Okay?
and don't take homogenized milk no 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 that's another no no okay and do not another thing is do not mix hot and cold foods together because hot enhances digestion cold suppresses all right and another thing that I must remind everybody is do not cook honey. Honey is a most wonderful healing medicine for the body. But once you heat it, you cook it, it becomes a toxin. All right? Okay, now another thing. Drinking. Oh my God. Drinking. There are two things in digestion, right? I mean, well, we already tackled the one, which is enzymes. The other one is heat, which is Agni, the fire. And the other one is acids, the digestive acids. You know, if you take, if you take the hydro, hydrochloric acid, which is needed for digestion, if you take it out of your body and you put it on a wooden surface, it will burn that wood. That's how strong the acid is. Okay, why? Because it has to break down all the fiber and the thing and the, the foods that you're eating so that it could release all the nutrients and send them. Okay, so you need that. Now, what do we do when we eat? Okay, the other one is heat. It's like inside there, it's very hot. And so the Agni, the fire, it's burning, right? What do you do when you drink something cold? One, you kill the fire. Of digestion to you uh, dilute the acids that's needed to break down the food all right so if you want to drink only drink sips of of hot or warm water or tea and if you take tea uh, make sure it doesn't have caffeine because caffeine has a way of blocking nutrients so if you're gonna take a cup of coffee or tea it should be like way after or way before because it blocks the absorption of some nutrients like iron and cosh and calcium all right stay away from sugar oh my god siguro everybody knows that uh, cancer cells love sugar well here's the thing with sugar the sugar cane oh, I, i'm talking too much already it's already so time oh do we have enough time huh are you guys okay and you're okay you guys okay we're only number four yes ma'am okay because see sugar because i have to tell you sugar cane is very healthy nature designed it as perfect it's got enzymes minerals nutrients fiber everything but what happens is from the sugar cane they squeeze it out and they process it process it process it until you have the white sugar left there and that is totally no more anything you see a basketball team is you need five right five ba? yeah five you need a basketball team I mean you need the five right if if you only have one or two in the how can you play right you're not gonna achieve you're gonna you're not gonna achieve the goal right so if you take out all the other things that comes with the package and just left with that single thing it's totally zero all right that applies to all foods as well all right now next slide please okay stay away from fried foods that is should be like a universal uh, reminder for health but sometimes you want to fry because frying you know makes food taste better and if you're gonna do this use good oils and what are the good good oils uh, ghee g-h-e-e -E, which is clarified butter olive oil well olive oil is not for high heat virgin coconut oil can withstand high heat and avocado oil uh, can also withstand high heat so if you must fry you know why it's bad to fry because first of all the oils that we use are so so processed that it's almost zero in benefits number two is when you heat oils to high temperature it releases a lot of free radicals and free radicals are a major factor in cancer all right 
So because of these oils, these good oils are so expensive, then automatically you will not fry very much. So instead, you can bake or broil or grill. Okay? Just get used to it. Okay, number six, please. Start the kids early. You know, just like the bonsai. When the bonsai is very small, right, it's easy to uh, manipulate, right? You can, uh, no, the direction. But as it gets older, it gets harder and harder. Therefore, when you start the kids early without sugar foods, without processed foods, then they will learn very early how to eat right. And aside from eating, you see, it's good for kids to know where food came from. Because then they will learn appreciation, gratitude, and respect. You know, in our farm, we've had some sixth, sixth graders, they come, you know, and I bring them around the farm, right? And I, and I show them, okay, do you know what tree this is? Do you know what fruit this is and everything? So we went to a, a we, we, we came across my a guyabana tree and there were guyabanos there hanging on fruits, right? So I asked them, okay, does anybody know what tree this is? And they answer, papaya. So it's like, oh, <laughs> You know, it's funny, but it's also very sad. You know what I mean? Because they're so detached. They're so far away from nature that it, it's sad. Um, it's not just about eating. It's it, like I said, it's holistic. It involves environment, everything like this, you know. And uh, it, it, like teaching kids how to grow. Like mongo, you, you sprout the mongo, watch. They can watch it. You know, they will understand that food does not come from supermarkets and packaged like that. They have no idea. Okay, number seven, please. Okay, that one is pretty much um, self-explanatory, but this is not emphasized enough. I cannot emphasize enough how much uh, water how much staying hydrated uh, can heal and prevent a lot of diseases. It is a good antihistamine. It is a good low uh, blood pressure regulator, aside from all the things that you read there on the slide, you know. It's, it's really wonderful. Of course, you have to choose your water. I mean, if your water is not purified, uh, purified in the sense from, 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 dirt and chlorine chlorine is a is is a, is a carcinogen by the way all right okay next slide do not be controlled by hype and hoopla in print tv social media and everywhere else and you will find yourself more at peace so nutrition doesn't only mean or health doesn't only mean health of the body it also means health of the mind Again, if we seriously study the Holy Scripture and follow the instructions that are laid out there, automatically we will be unattracted. We have to develop a higher taste. I promise you, if you start re-educating your taste buds to foods as they come naturally instead of processed foods, you know, you will, you will start to appreciate the value and, and, and the flavor and the nutrition of the foods so that you will develop this higher taste and then you will start to feel that, I mean, you will start to really not like terrible processed foods, really. I, I've seen it happen in our own family, in people who've come to live with us and everything. All right, number nine, please. Okay, take time to relax and exercise. The body was designed to move, all right? Moving gets the energy flowing, the blood circulating, the muscles and bones strengthened, the brain becomes more alert, the heart becomes more efficient and less tired. 
but sadly because everybody's just exercising their fingers nowadays right dong, 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 dong. that's it that's how people exercise kids how many kids know how nowadays how many kids know how to play patintero or how how many know know how to to fly a kite or to to play with the true what do you call the top the top that spins trompo trompo yeah trompo no more right they'd rather play with this only so what happens is uh sedentariness it's a major ma they better say sitting is the next is the new smoking because it increases obesity in children as well as adults a severe lack of exercise it cancels out all the benefits to keep cancer at bay and some of the benefits of course are healthy weight level levels remember that fat hosts toxins and cancer cells and it also increases estrogen production abnormally which is another factor in cancer and uh, exercise provides better oxygen flow remember that cancer cells they strive when the oxygen is deprived so if you have better oxygen flow less cancer and less heart disease and also decreases depression etc and it also releases endorphins which are the feel-good hormones that help lessen depression and adds to well-being and health all right so the last but not least so don't wait until your body bugs down to realize that Ta -da! next slide please health is wealth all right next please the last so the universal principle of staying healthy is to eat to live instead of living to eat all right and be nourished okay so that's the end of our slideshow now i wanted to add a little more here I'm running out of time but the idea that we should only do what's good for our bodies and good for ourselves is not enough all right i mean it's good it's a good jump off point but if we just stick to what is good for ourselves what is good for our bodies it keeps us on the platform of self-centeredness instead of god-centeredness we need to take it to the next level in the Srimad Bhagavatam there is a verse where it is explained that if we want peace and pr prosperity in this world then every state and every home must endeavor to advance the cause of Brahminical culture for self purification God consciousness for self-realization and cow protection for getting sufficient milk and the best food to continue a perfect civilization perfect imagine that how cool is that huh now there's another text very important can you please post it so that they can also read it the Srimad Bhagavatam chapter 3 text 11 if we want oh I, that's what i just said right if we want the next one by eating sanctified foods Ta -da! come on next by eating sanctified foodstuffs one's very existence becomes purified and by the purification of existence the finer tissues in the memory become sanctified and when the memory is sanctified one can think of the path of liberation and all of these combined can lead to god consciousness which is the greatest 
greatest necessity of present day society. You see, sanctified foods are spiritually potent foods. The primary factor missing in the whole picture is the Supreme Lord, right? We must first understand our, our relationship with the Lord. And we, we must see everything, especially nutrition and health, because this is what keeps us alive, right? We must see everything in relationship to the Supreme Owner. That's what's missing. So, you see, where health, next, next verse, it, again, Srimad Bhagavatam, this is the Bhagavad Purana. We, this is the scripture that I was talking about that has been handed down uh, from God himself, giving us instruction on how to live our lives, right? It says, where wealth and strength are not engaged in the advancement of Brahminical culture, God consciousness, and cow protection, the state and home are surely doomed. So, that's pretty heavy right there. And um, we are discounting. We are not putting, like, we're so into our bodies into our minds and getting you know it's good for a start but we must always strive for higher like i said earlier strive for higher purpose higher purpose higher taste all right so with this i say uh please stay healthy in body mind and spirit so we may use this body for a higher purpose namaste and now i will open the floor to um questions if you may have any questions you can ask any questions Good evening. Nine. Um, we haven't got any questions. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, po. Parang uh, based on personal experience lang po. Uh, every time na nagkakasakit po ako, uh, somehow means, yung last na pagkakasakit po po kasi, medyo matagal siya. Parang hindi lang siya, hindi lang siya ordinary trang kaso. And then, so, nawala na ako ng, wala akong ganang kumain. And everything, even if, Ah, uh, dinadala nila ako ng pagkain and everything. Tapos later on, parang so meron akong araw na hindi talaga ayaw hindi wala talaga pa akong gana kumain. Ayaw nung body ko na anyone, yeah. na, parang fluids lang ganoon. Tapos okay. parang somehow if you if you introspect, sasabihin sa iyo nung katawan mo kung ano yung kailangan niya. Pero pero na kung ano yung makakahil somehow yeah. na kung ano ba day one, puro fluids ka lang and everything. Tapos, tapos sa day two, pa, parang sinasabi ba ng body mo kung ano talaga yung, ano, ano lang yung kailangan mo munang ipasok sa katawan mo. Pero, yeah. hindi all the time kasi pag may sakit, is parang ganun. Kasi siya, hindi all the time, if you are not sensitive with your body, that sasabihin niya kung ano yung kailangan mo. Hindi all the time is we can, ano, masya, na ano tayo, eh, parang, in touch tayo kung anong sinasabi ng body. Pero yung yeah. last nagkasakit ako, nagkaroon ako ng realization na the body will exactly tell you yes. ano yung kailangan mo ipasok sa katawan. Parang ganun po. Yes. So, uh, yeah. What is your question? Uh, at it's saka minsan a, kasi, ano, uh, my question is, some, sometimes, kasi di ba, uh, we, we ask, nagpapacheck up tayo, we ask prescription from doctors, pero, Minsan yung tablets na bibigay sa iyo. Is pero parang feeling mo hindi ko hindi nagre-resonate or I don't I don't I don't know how to explain it. Pero parang ayoko niyan, parang yeah, yeah. Na ako parang ganun po. I don't know kung kung paano po. Yeah, well, you know, first of all, uh the re we have to believe in our body that nature, you know, by God's design 
nature has designed self-healing within our bodies. But because our lifestyle and our environment is so toxic and unnatural, then we lose we lose this ability to heal. But we have to have faith that our body can heal itself. And it's very, very powerful. That's why you don't have appetite. Why? Do you notice the dogs when they're sick? They don't eat. And they, they go and eat grass, right? They eat grass because why does the body, why do you lose appetite? Because your body has to focus on healing. All right. And number two, your question is like, I don't really quite understand your question, but like you're asking like how, how to go about it when when you, it's true that that's the Lord in your heart. Actually, you know that, you know, when you get this intuition, intuition, right? You get this gut feel, you know, like gut feel. People say, ah, uh, you know, I really don't, you know, that, that's the Lord in your heart. That is your body telling you, the Lord in your heart and your body telling you, okay, this is good for you, This don't do this, and like that. Well, sometimes, of course, you know, I mean, you might be hearing voices and stuff like that, but basically, <laughs> basically, you'll know what is right. Stick with what is natural. Stick with what is, what is natural. Of course, I'm, I mean, look, huh, I'm, if you have a serious bacterial infection, then it's good to take an antibiotic to address that bacterial um, infection right away before it creates havoc in your body. But remember that you have to uh, make cambio. You have to, because there are a lot of, uh, side of bad side effects from antibiotics because it doesn't only kill the bad, but it also kills the good. Therefore, later on, after taking the antibiotics, you must take the probiotics but if you can get natural antibiotics like i make medicines right so i make natural antibiotics and so far i haven't taken an antibiotic for the longest time and i take that and it works but you see um you have to have like really good antibiotics to deal with specific kinds of bacteria and sometimes the bacteria the bacteria nowadays they're just really heavy duty because you know because of man's screwing up everything right okay i hope that answers your question i think there's another question yes ma'am uh, i'll leave it for what is a good diet for for person who has like cyst in the breast or fibrocystic buccal oh naku, that's a long answer but let me tell you that when whatever your disease is, the first order of the day is to cleanse and detox. Uh, when you have cysts, whether or not they are benign or they are malignant, they should not be there. Therefore, you should work on trying to get them out of there by cleansing and detox. You know, like a house. Imagine your house, all right? your house you haven't cleaned it for ages what do you think it's gonna look like it's gonna be terrible it's gonna be dirty right so if you don't do regular it during your life you don't do regular occasional cleanses and detoxes therefore all these toxins will accumulate and some of them will manifest in 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 uh, in cysts in tumors in uh, gout or in whatever wherever your weakness your weakest point is that's where the toxins will become strong you see so uh you have to adapt you have to do cleanse and detox like i said clean out your pantry from all the bad new stuff eat properly follow all those basic rules that i I outlined there that like I said that's nutrition 101 basically if you follow that you're going to be in a good place you know all right I hope that answers your question any other question meron po ma'am sa chat box 
Okay, well, can we just read it? Jari, can you read yes, we'll, we'll read it po. Your okay. thoughts, please, on intermediate fasting or low-carb calorie deficit. Thanks. Low-calorie defici deficit what? Anyway, for, first of all, low-calorie de deficit... Intermittent fasting or low-carb cal okay. calorie deficit. Intermittent fasting... Um, basically, you know, food and nutrition and health, they're very faddish, right? They're very faddish. They like to put all these new fads and da 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 da. But actually, intermittent fasting is like, I mean, if you really analyze it, you just eat less, which is better. You eat less. And, um, but the problem is the window the window even if you take away that that term intermittent fa fasting and you follow let's say you don't uh, eat much when the sun is low which means at night which means the intermittent fasting time you stop eating at night up to the next morning because even the next morning when the sun is low you don't eat yet so much you just eat light or whatever you know what I mean so intermittent fasting uh, is just that basically right but of course they try to make it very complicated by saying okay if you're this age to this age oh uh, but this is your window and everything but no across the board universally you shouldn't eat when the sun is low you shouldn't eat heavy and if you just eat like juice or, or take a fruit or something that's fine and fasting is not for everyone and especially if you are sick uh your body your body automatically fasts but you should take some very very nutritious foods like in the form of juice you know vegetable juice or fruit make sure it's organic fruit and about low carb you know where we get our energy we get our energy from carbohydrates when they keep pushing low carbs and high fat and high protein that's a very grave imbalance that's a very grave imbalance again it's a fad and it can lead to a lot of other problems just keep your life simple simple living high thinking that is that is the bottom line and like I said, you know, in that slide number nine, try not to be uh, sucked in by all these different hype and hoopla in, in, in social media and everything. This is the latest thing, oh, high carbs. And everything. No, it's not normal. Just eat right. Just eat a good quantity, a good combination, and all these things. Now, as far as for food combinations are concerned, you can research that there's not enough time to discuss it here but i am not i'm definitely not for super low carbs and high fat and high protein there must be a balance it's dangerous for the heart truly all right and as far as um intermittent fasting it's good if you just follow the cycles of the sun all right Okay, any other question? Yes, ma'am. Meron po ulit tayo sa chat box. What, did, okay. what to do if you watch your diet and still you have many health issues po? Um, well, that's a long answer because then you have to f figure out where is the problem. What you are doing that is causing these problems. Or if you know you're watching your diet now you see it's the state of your health now doesn't mean like okay today i'm gonna eat well or this week i'm gonna eat well oh, how come i'm still sick no it's what it accumulates right it's what happened before before pa like you could have like i know someone who was um very involved with agriculture as a student, an agriculture student, was very involved with um, 
uh, handling of chemical fertilizers and chemical pesticides and everything, handling it, being close to it, teaching the farmers how to do it and everything. And then she lived her life and everything. Very, very carefully watched her diet, vegetarian, everything, everything, everything. But still, her liver, everything, it's, it's, it's just a very weak kidney. And she's doing whatever she can. You see, it's accumulated. It's it's been from the past. So like I said in the beginning, remember, I said there are two reasons you get sick. One is karma and the other one is toxins. And maybe in this case, maybe you're still sick. Maybe there's still some toxins in your environment. It's not only what you eat, it's what you put in and on your body, in and on your body. Like if you, use a lot of shampoo with all these cancer causing ingredients in your shampoo and in your soap it goes you know in your skin it goes into your body it could be so many things so it's not just say oh yeah, i'm watching my diet why am i like this still you know there's some people who are like you know they eat all the junk in the world and they don't get sick i mean they smoke all their lives and they and, and, and they live to hundred you know what I mean it's 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 far more than our little minds can perceive but it doesn't mean that oh how come her oh look oh, look oh she's eating all the junk and she's not getting sick or oh, like this like this why should I suffer and for and give up all my and no <laughs> the bottom line like I said is go beyond what is good for your body and start moving towards God centeredness instead of self-centeredness and um, with that, it doesn't mean to stop your good diet, all right? Just continue and do a cleanse, do do a detox, but it has to be supervised depending on how sick you are, okay? So it's good to, to, to um, pay attention and to consult with a professional who can help you so that your detox reactions are not very severe and debilitating. All right. I hope that answered your question. Any other questions? Any other questions? I think there's no more questions. All right. Okay. So now, you know, we've been talking a lot of food for the body, healthy food for the but most most important is food for the spirit real food and this is where meditation comes in meditation of, of mantras man means mind tra means take away the mind so you take away the mind from that which is material into the transcendental so we are going to do some sound meditation with music, with mantras, which uh, Manjari will post. And it's very timely because Gopala Govinda, it's, it means, uh, it's, it's a name of God. By the way, mantras are not of this world, they're from the spiritual world, and it is a form of meditation, uh, which you can do with yourself, by yourself, with other people, uh, quietly or loudly and uh, and the and the method is respon responsorial okay so i will chant and then you will re respond and then i will chant and you will respond Gopala Govinda is a name of god that refers to the chief how heard the chief herdsman the lover and protector of cow Remember how I was saying in the scripture, it says that we must do cow protection. All right. Are you ready? We just have a short uh, mantra meditation. Can you please post the...
other mantras. Put the mantras, please.
tap into the mantras. Someone is sleeping in the job. Anyway, all right. Thank you very much. Namaste. Thank you so much. And that I hope that somehow this has made your uh, time worthwhile. <laughs> I hope that I have shed some light and I hope that you will take this mantra meditation into your lives because I promise you your life will be so much better, your mind will be so much clearer and your heart will be so much purer. All right, thank you very much. Namaste. Thank you very much, Mom. Terrible. Namaste. Thank you. thank you very much, Bo. Okay. Bye. Teacher, thank you. <laughs> Teacher, thank okay. you. Okay. <laughs> Let's open our cams, Bo, everyone, for picture taking, Bo. Hello, Ma'am Mitch, Sir Patrick, Ma'am Rose, Ma'am Sugar. Yan. <laughs> Kita ko na sila lahat. Namaste, everyone. Manjari, can you please uh, screenshot there? Nice meeting Hi, you all. Okay, one, two, three. Hi, Ball. Hi, Ball. Hi, Ball. Namaste, everyone. Namaste. All right. Thank you very Bye. much, Ma'am. Thank you very much, Ma'am. Bye. Bye. Signing off. Thank you. And uh, just just in case for that you wish to share yung ano natin yung webinar, you can Manjari, can you please share yung link? Uh, yes, live stream po kasi siya sa isang page. So anytime you can replay it or share it to your friends. Kasi ang dami nating natutunan. <laughs> Thank you very much, ma'am. Namaste okay. everyone. Good night. Bye bye. Hi, Ball. Hi, Ball.